Hey everyone, it's me, Peter, and welcome to my second of three bonus vlogs that I'm sharing with you today. Yesterday I shared with you my 10 least favorite Christmas songs. Well today, let's move a little bit more into the positive direction. Today, I am going to be sharing with you my top 10 guilty pleasure Christmas songs. These are songs that I'm a little embarrassed to admit that I'm a big fan of, but at the same time, I don't care, because I love these songs, even if they are cheesy, even if they are corny, even if they're kind of bad. I still love them, and I love listening to them every single year. Without further ado, let's begin with the list. Number 10, Jingle Bell Rock by Bobby Helms. I know a lot of people really don't like this song. They think it's a little cheesy, they think it's a little corny. And admittedly, yes, some of the lyrics are kind of dumb, like, giddy up jingle horse, pick up your feet. That lyric actually makes me smile every time I hear it, because it's like, you couldn't have thought of a better lyric for that. Nevertheless, this is a song that I always find myself singing along to when it comes on the radio, in particular the Bobby Helms version, which I believe was the original version. It's a song I never get tired of and I never get bored with, even if it is a little bit corny. Number 9. The Night Santa Went Crazy by Weird Al Yankovic. Now, there's a chance that most of you don't even know what I'm talking about with this song. This song came out back in the mid-90s on Weird Al's album Bad Hair Day, and it basically talks about one day when Santa gets really fed up with everything and literally snaps. And it's very, very graphic in describing what Santa does when he actually does snap. In fact, there's actually one version that was so gory, Al actually had to re-edit the song and put more innocent lyrics in it. In that version, Santa Claus dies. In the other version, he gets sent to prison for life. Now, I will admit, the version where Santa Claus dies is a little almost too graphic for my taste. I actually do prefer the one where he gets sent to prison, but it's still a song that I do enjoy listening to, or maybe enjoy isn't the right word. It's still a song that I well, like isn't even a good word either. Let's say this. It's a song I listen to fairly occasionally around the holiday season. I know it's graphic, I know it's horrible, but it is Weird Al singing it, so I will let it slide on this one. Number 8. Fairy Tale of New York by The Pogues featuring Kirsty McCall. I will bet out of all of you watching, none of you know what this Christmas song is. And honestly, I hadn't even heard of it until just a few years ago. The song tells the story of two recent Irish immigrants spending their first Christmas in New York City. And the song is really not a happy one. It talks about how they had all these dreams of success and stardom and how it really amounted to nothing in the end. The couple singing the song actually get into a fight, which is told in the second verse. There is some strong language in this that would prevent the song from being played on the radio. And some of the language is just downright offensive. And for some reason, I find myself listening to the song every year. I honestly can't explain why I like this song so much, but it's definitely a guilty pleasure. Number 7. Do They Know It's Christmas by Band-Aid. Now I know what you're thinking. Peter, wasn't this song on your list yesterday of the top 10 worst Christmas songs? Yes, this song was on yesterday's list of my 10 least favorite Christmas songs, but I can't help it. I love blasting the song on the radio every time I hear it. I love singing along with the chorus. I know the lyrics are condescending, but at the same time, it was meant for a good cause, which was raising money for African famine relief. And I can't completely hate this song for that reason. Last year, I placed this song on my list of my top 10 non-traditional Christmas songs, and I stand by that decision. Yeah, the lyrics may be condescending. Yeah, it may be pretty much universally hated, but it's one of my favorites. Number six, The 12 Days of Christmas. As I've gotten older, I've found that there are a lot of people that really have a strong dislike for this song. They think it goes on for too long, they think it's annoying, 
but I don't see what the hate is about. I honestly really like this song. I hear this song quite frequently on the radio, specifically the Ray Khanna version, and every time I hear it, I have to turn it up and sing along with it, especially the Five Gold Rings part. Yeah, the song does go on for a bit long. Yeah, the gifts mentioned aren't exactly gifts, especially the Seven Swans of Swimming, but you know what? I really don't care. I love listening to this song every single Christmas. Number five, Frosty the Snowman. This is one of those songs they didn't really used to play on the radio all the time, but in the past few years it's kind of gained a cult following among the songs they play on the radio, and they play many different versions of the song. I've heard the original Gene Autry version, I've heard the Jimmy Durante version, which was from the TV movie, I've heard the Beach Boys version. There are countless versions of the song that exist, and I find myself singing along with them all the time. Even the Jimmy Durante version, which my mother cannot stand. My mom is not a Jimmy Durante fan at all. But I still find myself singing along with it. I even find myself trying to impersonate his voice, which usually kills my own voice, but that's another story in and of itself. Yeah, the song's kind of geared towards kids. Yeah, it's kind of cheesy. But still, it's a song I love listening to. Number four. The Chipmunk song... Christmas Don't Be Late. Now this is a song that gets a lot of hate, and I completely understand where people are coming from. It's kind of annoying with the high-pitched voices, it's really not that great of a song, especially since the song is just repeating the same thing over and over again, and some people don't like the fact that Dave Seville, the character in the song, is yelling at Alvin. But you know what? I love this song, and you want to know why I love this song? Because it's one of the few Christmas songs I can actually sing along with. See, my vocal range is falsetto. I can only sing very high notes, and this is one of the few Christmas songs I can sing without a problem. Also, I fully admit to turning up the volume whenever I hear this song on the radio. I know it's not a good song, I know it's annoying, but I love it. I can't help it. Number three, You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch by Thurl Ravenscroft. This is another one of those songs that only recently has gotten a lot of airplay on the radio. And once again, it's another song that I love hearing. First of all, I'm a big fan of Thurl Ravenscroft's voice. For those who don't know, the late Thurl Ravenscroft was actually the voice of Tony the Tiger from the Frosted Flakes commercials. He also played Kirby the Vacuum in the Brave Little Toaster movies. And in my opinion, Thurl Ravenscroft is the best singer of this song. He gets that low, low voice talking about what a terrible person the Grinch is. And also, I just love the lyrics in the song. They're so original, they're so clever. In fact, I very recently scored 100% on a quiz trying to name the lyrics to the song. Is that something I should be proud of? I don't know. And if you don't like this song, well then you're a three-decker sauerkraut toadstool sandwich with arsenic sauce. I, I'm kidding, my friends, I'm kidding. No, no you're not. I, uh, move along to the next song, please, right now. Number two, Linus and Lucy by the Vince Guaraldi Trio. I've been a fan of the Peanuts theme song for quite some time. I remember I had a video once a long time ago where the song played over a commercial that was on the tape, and I constantly watched it back and forth, back and forth, because I loved hearing that song. There's just something about that piano melody that I absolutely love. Maybe it's because I can't play piano and I wish I could, especially this song. If I could figure out how to play the song on the piano, that would be amazing. And when I found out that this song is considered a Christmas song and is played on the radio all the time during the season, I was sold. I blast this song at full volume every time I hear it on the radio. There's just one thing that prevents it from being number one. And it's after the main part of the song, it drifts into this thing that sounds nothing like the rest of the song. And while it's decent, it's not as good as the do 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 part of the song. That's my favorite part. And while I'm a big fan of Vince Guaraldi, that interlude it goes into towards the end of the song, not a big fan of. 
And that's the one thing that's keeping this song from being number one. So what is my number one? Let's find out now. And my number one guilty pleasure Christmas song is... Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Again, I know this song is meant for children. I know it's clearly played for a younger audience. But I don't care. I love this song. And honestly, I don't know why I do. It's just one of these songs that's so catchy. It gets in your head and won't get out. And I've loved it ever since I was a little kid, and I still love it to this very day. My personal favorite version of the song is the original done by Gene Autry, but lately I've started falling in love with the Burl Ives version. I know some people don't like Burl Ives because he had that same voice for every song, but I like it. I think it's a nice, memorable little tune. Like Frosty the Snowman, this song also spun off a TV special back in the 60s. I haven't seen the TV special in years, and quite honestly, I think I like the song a little bit more than the special. The song definitely, I feel, had a lot more staying power. That's not to say the Christmas special is bad, but as someone who hasn't seen it in probably about 15 years, but who has heard the song more recently, I gotta give props to the song on this one. And there you have it, friends, my list of my top 10 favorite guilty pleasure Christmas songs. If you have a guilty pleasure Christmas song that you're almost embarrassed to admit you enjoy, leave a comment below explaining what it is. And be sure to tune in tomorrow for my third and final bonus vlog where I discuss my top 10 favorite Christmas songs. Thanks a lot for watching my friends and I will see you tomorrow.